I'm the calculus professor and today we'll be talking about volumes by slicing. Welcome back. Uh, today we'll be talking about section 6.3 volume by slicing and we're going to start out with problem number seven and in problem number seven uh, we want to find the volume of the solid whose base is bounded by the curves y equals x squared and y equals 2 minus x squared, and whose cross sections through the solid perpendicular to the x-axis are squares. Okay, so I went ahead and uh, <clears throat> uh, made a picture here of the base region. In other words, uh, the little uh, region that's bounded by these two parabolas. So I drew the two parabolas, and then it says that the cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis are squares. So in other words, what that's saying is that if I took a slice of this thing and I cut the object that's sitting over this region, that if I took a slice uh, that's perpendicular to the x-axis, then I would get a slice that looked like a square. And over here, if I took a slice, I'd get a slice that looked like a square. And if I took a slice, I'd get a slice that looked like a square. So we get the idea of what this thing might look like. Every slice that I make on this thing is a square. Now we want to find what's the volume of the shape that's sitting over that region. All right. So to do this, uh, we just have to know the formula for volume of um, a shape like this where all of the cross sections are squares. But in general, what we want to do is we want to integrate from A to B of some area, cross-sectional area function dx. So we need to know what are we integrating from and to, what's the area of each of our cross sections, and then we're integrating in this case with respect to x. So I want to ask where do I start the cutting and where do I stop my cutting? So I'm cutting this up into a bunch of squares. Where do I start? Where do I stop? Well, uh, I officially I start here and I end here. If we are to figure out where are these places, this looks like it's at minus one, this is at one. Uh, you can figure that out just by looking or it, you could say, oh, what numbers can I plug in for x that would give me the same y value? Um, and you can see that 1 and negative 1 would both do the job for both of these equations. So we're integrating from negative 1 to 1, but I want to make life just a little bit easier on myself. I can see that this object is going to be symmetric about the y-axis. So I could just integrate from 0 to 1 and then double it to get my volume. And that's what I want to do. So instead of integrating from negative 1 to 1 of my area function, I'm going to integrate from 0 to 1 and then double it, which is just as good. So I'm going to look at this guy. This is 2 because I'm doubling it. Integral from 0 to 1 of some area function. Well, if I'm sitting here on this curve, at some point, let's call this x, then what's the area of the cross section? Well, if I'm sitting here at x, then I want to take this length times this height. But this is a square, so those are the same. So what I really want to do is I want to take the length, for, or the top function minus the bottom function, and then square it to get my square. So let's figure out what is that length. Well, it's the top function minus the bottom function. Well, the top function in this case is 2 minus x squared. So this is 2 minus x squared minus the bottom function. The bottom function is x squared. That whole thing, well, that's that distance. But I want that distance times itself, so I want to square that dx. So in other words, I've got 2 times the integral from 0 to 1 of some square, because the cross sections are squares, so it's a length squared dx. Okay, 
So if I integrate that, that should get the job done for me. Let's do it. Uh, I'm going to start out, this is two times integral from zero to one of, uh, let's simplify this a little bit. This is two minus two x squared squared dx. Uh, we could square that out. Let's do that real quick. This is two integral from zero to one of, if I square this, I get four. Uh, then two times the first times the second gives me minus eight x squared. And then I square the second guy and I get plus four x to the fourth. All of that dx. All right. Uh, let's take an antiderivative here. We get 2 times antiderivative of 4 is 4x. Antiderivative of negative 8x squared is negative 8 third x cubed. Antiderivative of 4x to the fourth is plus 4 fifths x to the fifth evaluated from 0 to 1. We plug things in. We still have this 2 out front. We plug in 1 and I get 4 minus 8 thirds plus 4 fifths. And then I plug in 0 and I get 0 minus 0 plus 0. So it's just 2 times this value. So let's uh, get a common denominator for this thing and we'll see what we got. So we still have this 2. Common denominator for 3 and 5 would be 15. So let's write 4 in fifteenths. So that's 60 fifteenths. Uh, minus, let's see, multiply by 5 on top and bottom. So we get 40 fifteenths. And then 4 fifths could also be written as plus 12 fifteenths. So what do we end up with here? We've got 2 times 60 minus 40 is 20, plus 12 is 32 fifteenths. And so my final answer here is going to be 64 over 15. And what is this? Uh, this answer is in cubic units, uh, if you wanted to put that on. Uh, but I'm really finding the volume of this solid that lives over this region where all the cross sections are squares.